has spared me. I'm happy what God is doing in my life. I don't have a sad story. Everything is not going the way I wanted to go. Things are not just lining up the way I thought they're going to line up, but I'm still happy. I'm content where I am. See, when you can find contentment in Jesus, you can find contentment in the Lord, you're going to be happy. But when you're trying to make things just force things to work on your own, that's like trying to stick a round, uh, a round uh, object through a square hole. And you can beat it, pound it, whatever you want to do. It just ain't going to work. And that's what some of us doing is trying to make things that don't fit work. But if we just sit back and let God lead and direct us, sometimes we just got to just take our hands off of everything for a week, two weeks. And say, God, let you, you lead and guide me. God, I'm following you. I'm tired of trying to do it my way. Every time I try, I wind up in this dead-end road or falling over in the ditch or turned upside down somewhere, and then I got to start all over. I got to fix this and then start trying to get back on the road again. We've been going through this cycle too long. Too long. And the only reason we're there is because of the condition of our minds. On well, this morning, we're going to talk about conditioning your mind. Believe it or not, your mind has a lot to do with everything that you do. Uh -huh, the Bible says in Romans 7 and 25, so, so then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God. You can't serve God nowhere else but in your mind. And if your mind is all over the place and you're doing what you want to do instead of having the mind of Christ, you're serving in vain. Things have to line up. Things has a natural order. Things has a spiritual order. Once we get things in order and do things step by step, this life becomes easier. Then the, the problems become bearable, and you don't have all these, these panic attacks when things show up. Amen? Every, everybody got your Bibles on this morning. We're going to go to the Scripture, then we're going to run through some verses. Amen? You know I'm not a one-verse preacher, so get your pen out. And the only reason I like doing this is because I want you to understand how to work your own Bible. This is why you bring a Bible to church so you can go back home and cross-reference scriptures. How did he get this? What is he doing this? The, God told me, listen, you don't have a fresh new crew of sinners that walk in here on every Sunday morning. You can't preach like you preaching to a bunch of sinners trying to get them saved. You got to teach your people how to live saved. When I make altar calls, very few people come down here want to be saved. So I can't be preaching those type of messages for people to get saved. I have to preach messages for you to learn how to stay saved. I have to preach messages for you to learn how to be happy in your salvation and, 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 and how to make it through. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get bored because you're not elevating. You're not moving no higher. And then all of a sudden you just start fading away. But we got to have the condition of our mind. We got to condition our mind. Ephesians 4. We're going to read verses 20 through 24. This is Paul talking to the church of Ephesus. All kinds of stuff was going on in Ephesus. Sort of like UHDT. You know, everybody, you don't talk about it, but everybody got something going on. Everybody got something going on in their houses with their spouses, with their children, with their family members, on their jobs. It's just, it's called life. And when life gets to a point where it's, it's pushing you to a place where you don't want to come to church, we have a problem. We have a problem. Life can get you to that point where church is not working, so I'm going to do something different. Yes. But we're going to have to condition our minds. Once our minds is conditioned, you just can't condition your mind the way you think you can condition your mind. There's a way to condition your mind. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. You know, we, we, we need to read our scripture first because people are looking at me like, this ain't for me. <laughs> yeah, look at me like, yeah, I can't wait till you get on this message because I'm a boy, I know who this message is for. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, what it says? I mean, yourselves. 
whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except now, now I think I got your attention. Who is it for? Me. Hey, man, just say me. Whenever I ask that question, just say me. The word is for me. I'm going to get all I can. I, if you want to think about the word of God, when it comes by, I, I take yours, everybody. I want, I'm greedy when it comes to the word. Get all you can, can't all you get. But some people get all they can, can't all they get, and they sit on the pot and pause on the rest. Some people don't want nobody else to have nothing. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24 reads how? But, but ye have not so learned Christ. Read the book. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Uh-huh. That ye put off concerning the, form, the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Read. And... Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was the mind of Christ Jesus? Christ Jesus' mind was to do the will of the Father. And until we get that mindset that we're going to do whatever God wants us to do, then that's how we start reconditioning our minds. It has nothing to do with what you want. I don't care what kind of husband you want. If God ain't sent him to you, that ain't the right man. I don't care how fine she is, how good she can cook. How, if that God ain't sent her to you, that's the wrong woman. We have to understand that God knows best for what he knows what's best for me. Yes. Didn't you hear the song? Even Sing, Corinth. <laughs> Just tell him thank you when he give it to you. Don't say, well, I don't know about this. Some of us, we just want it. It's okay to want certain things. It's okay to desire to have certain things. But if it don't come in a timely fashion, that means God is not denying. He could be just delaying. Don't, it's not for you to say, well, God, I gave you two weeks. God, I've been waiting four years on this man, and I see this woman. And all of a sudden, you just got to have her. In your mind, all I see is this, the, the body, the lips, the hips. In the wall, you see the package. You see, you see the, you see what you want. You, the, the, the lust of the eye, and then, then, then she sees this man got a job, a nice house, and no children. Woo! I mean, I notice he's just in and out by himself. He smell good. He bathed. You know, little boys when he he but we. Little boys didn't like bathing. I don't know. I was, I was one of them. You had to throw me in the tub. I just like being dirty. We just like getting in dirt. But real boys like to go play marbles and dig holes and, you know, have mud fights and all this kind of stuff. Then you get to bathing. But, 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 but God has what in mind what he wants you to have. And what we have to do is get our mind connected with God and then we'll know what. To receive. But it has to be what he wants. And you know what? You have to first have a willing mind. You have to be willing to have the mind of Christ. Everything about being saved is voluntary. Ain't no God is not making us do absolutely nothing. And that's what people want God to do. God, if you don't want me to have this, do this. Do. No, you do it yourself. And then people want to say, hey, well, well, if God didn't want me this, I wouldn't be here. No, you made choices that put you in situations that where you are. You don't have to be married at, at 22. Most 22-year-olds don't know nothing about marriage anyway. 
18 and 19 want to run to the altar. You don't know nothing. All you can think about men anyway, all they can think about is sex. Man, I'm going to have me a wife. Woo! Holy Ghost sex and everything. Lawful sex. Woo! I ain't going to have to go to hell and burn or nothing. That's the only thing on there. Yeah, men. Because that's, men are, 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 are wired different than women. We was trained differently from little boys. We, 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 we learned everything from another little boy who didn't know nothing. We taught each other. And nobody knows nothing. Ain't no daddies around really just sitting us down and saying, boy, this is the way it's going to be. Very few daddies did that back in my day, in my, in, in my family. They don't know about nobody else. Let me take that back. In my family. And the, and the men I hung around with, the guys I hung around with over in the projects or wherever we was living, we taught each other, which wasn't a good idea. But, the, but then the females, on the other hand, they was, they was raised to get married. They play dolls, they play house, they, they got cooking stuff. They read novels about romance. Looking for your knight in shining armor, and you want to walk down beaches and hold hands and go off into the sunset and live happily ever after with the picket fence and two and a half kids. You just got your mind. This is what you, this is, hey, that, man, I can't wait to get married. But you marrying this old rascal over here who was taught by his friends about nothing. And both of her y'all come down the aisle. This dude knows nothing and you don't know nothing either because all you've been doing is reading these fantasy books about how good marriage is going to be. And when I get man, if he ain't right, I just change him. Then you get down there and, and, and the preacher says, you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife. And he's sitting there looking at all them people. I done got here now. Instead of saying, I guess, he said, I do. And now you're married. Now you're married. And you don't know what you're to marry. He don't know what he to marry. Neither one of you know anything. And all of a sudden, here come some kids. Some kids, the two and a half kids show up. Now you got some extra going on in this trying to learn each other. All sorts of issues pop up. Kids get sick. I really don't know you now. I got to deal with my kids. I still ain't figured out who you are yet. Only thing I know about you is I, I like what you look like, but now you come living over here now you don't like you don't like cleaning up. You can't cook. You don't like working. You can't pay bills if I give you the money. I didn't know. I didn't know you didn't know all of this. But now I got to take care of the baby, so I can't just just run you off. Because I said to death do us part, for better or for worse. And he looked at you the same way. You don't cook either. You ain't cleaning. You, you worried about the kid and worried about yourself more than you worried about me. What about me? You know men get to the point where worried about me. You my wife. It's, it's a possession type thing happened now. Yeah. But, but, but what happened is we didn't take time to learn each other. We didn't take time to figure out is this thing going to work. We let me tell you something. It's okay to get married in your mid-30s, early 30s. I'm about to be an old maid. No, you need to be stable. You need to know who you are. And you need to know what you're getting. But everybody, no, I ain't waiting that long. That's okay. Y'all can look at me like that. Who is this message for? Amen. Amen. Hey, the prodigal son had a problem. He wanted everything his way when he wanted it. I want it now and I want it all. I want it all and I want it now. And he went out there and did his thing. He didn't know nothing either. He was about as stupid as he could be. Went out there and they took all his money. 
Didn't nobody want to deal with them no more. Sent them over there, the old boy. Old boy said, you can come over here and feed the hogs, but they ain't giving you no food. Put them to work, but won't give them no food. Wasn't paying them enough to go buy him no food. So he want to eat what the hogs eat. This is the situation you get in when you start making steps and we're not asking God without having the same mind. But what he did is what we all need to do is come to ourselves. Slow down and think. Even if your situation is real dire and it's real bad, how did I get here and do I have to stay here? He realized I don't have to be in this situation. Now, my father got some servants that, that's eating, eating good and got money. and house. I just let me be one of them. And our father got everything. He owned all the cattle on a thousand hills. And we sitting around wondering what we going to eat. I have a question for you this morning. If I asked you how to condition your mind, what would you tell me? Most of y'all would say, I, 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 I read books. I study. I pray. I meditate. I, I talk to other people. And all those are good answers. But you're not conditioning your mind. You're feeding your mind. There's a difference between feeding your mind and conditioning your mind. You feed your mind with wisdom, with knowledge. You feed your mind with how-to, all these how-to books, self-books, and reading, 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 and all you're doing is pumping your mind up with a whole bunch of information. That's called feeding your mind. Now, what happens in the natural if you feed yourself and don't condition yourself? You're going to blow up and be sorry and lazy. And that's what's wrong with the church world. We're getting so much information about the mind and everybody want to get all these books and this how-to and this self-help, but ain't nobody conditioning the mind. Sometimes we can get too much information. Quit going to all the conferences and reading all the books and every time an author come out with this and another author come out with that and how to do it and all, here's the book right here. If you can't find it in here, it don't need to be found. That's going to be man's opinion. We need to know what the Lord says. This is how we get our mind with Christ. Conditioning. It's the process of training to behave in a certain way. A process of changing behavior. Conditioning is a process. Now, we like getting into the game. We don't like getting in shape. That's, 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 that's why Ezekiel Elliott ain't, ain't, in, ain't in training camp. He ain't all about money. He don't want to practice. Some people just don't like the training. Some people don't like being told how to do things, how to learn. Just send me out. I just want to go out there and witness and testify and tell people about God. No, you need to be taught. You need to be showed how to do things. But a lot of us, we just, we ain't, we ain't really ain't trying to do that. But believe it or not, your mind is constantly being conditioned every day by the stuff that you watch on television, by the social media, tags that you're going back and forth to. These things are conditioning your mind. When you go, when, when conditioning, I mean, you're trying to you're doing the same thing over to develop the only way you can condition a muscle is you got to con constantly pick it up. At first, it's hard. It's really hard once you start pushing on weights. But after a while, you could just, you could just throw them up there. Then you got to get some heavier weights. And this is where you get different stages and, and you develop in yourself. But a lot of us has never conditioned our mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And this thing is a process. Quit, quit thinking that you can condition yourself overnight. When you come down and get saved, your mind is not conditioned. In Ephesians, that put off the former man. That former man did not come down and everything changed immediately. It's a process. This is why you got to come to church. You got to learn. You got to find out what the Bible says, what right and what wrong, what God allows and what God does not allow. You just can't come down here, give your hand to the preacher and say, I'm saved. And that's all you do. You didn't go back out there and come on another Sunday, want to shout, but you never pick up nothing to condition your mind. Your mind is doing what your body tells it to. Oh, no, I, I thought my body do what my mind said. No, whatever you do physically, your mind 
becomes that. Your mind becomes what you train it to be. If you smile every day, your mind is not going to be sad. If you're frowning all the time, you have this woe is me mentality. Understand, this is why, get away from all this, you don't have to do nothing uh, uh, gospel. Just can't come down here and give your hand to the preacher and all of a sudden everything works out. What you going to do? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore. I beseech you, I beg you, read. Brethren. Brethren, sister and children, read. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God, read. That ye present your body. Present, offer, sacrifice, put up out there, show off. Show it off. Your body is what? A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. When you sacrifice something, you are giving up your will of this thing and letting God take control. And if you still want to do with your body what you think it is, you're not making it a living sacrifice. You got to give it up. Whatever God wants, you have to let God have. But you got to present it. God is not going to make you do it. Read. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Read. Acceptable. And if God don't accept what you're doing, it's not right. You got to start it all over. It can't just, well, God, this is what I got. If you don't accept it, so what? If you don't accept it, guess what? You're going to hell. Simple as that. Then we need preachers need to come on with it and quit babying people. Tell people they don't live right, they're going to hell. You 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 you're straightforward with everything else. This is the way I am. I'm gay, and that's the way I know. You're going to hell if you're gay. Read. Acceptable. And it has to be acceptable. Uh-huh. Unto God. And God has to be. The, it can't, I don't care if your mama says okay for you to be gay. Your daddy says okay. No. If God don't accept it, it's not acceptable. I don't care if the pastor says okay. No, it's not acceptable. Your lifestyle has to be acceptable to God. Read. Which is your reasonable service. And, and that's just your reasonable service. Read. And. And. Be not conformed to this world. And don't try to do everything you see everybody else doing. Styles and, 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 and the way they act, the way they walk, the way they dress, these, these weird old hairstyles and tattoos. Everybody who getting this tattoo spirit and went crazy in this world. People just painting up their body. It's a spirit. What? That's, that's not the most biggest waste of money I've ever heard and seen in my entire life. You're going to let somebody sit there and cut you and, and put ink in your system and just paint murals on your body. And now what? You ain't got no bill money. You ain't paying no car note. Oh, you, now you look like a fool. You can't just go take it off tomorrow. Now you got to go have surgery to get it off. You ain't funny. Everybody ain't funny. How are you looking like that? I'm telling you, I don't get discrimination or not, you ain't going to work for everybody looking like that. Ain't going to be representing some Fortune 500 company looking like that. Okay, what your degree is, or how, well, you curb, you was top of the class. You done blew that. Read. But uh-huh. be ye transformed. Transform. Don't, don't, don't conform, but transform. How? By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. And when you renew something, you take it back to an original state. See, our original state was before Adam sinned. God said, I can renew you to that point. But you got to serve a process. I'm not going to just snap my fingers and everybody. No, God, God wants to see how much you want it. It's your process. It's what you're going to do. And what you do uh, uh, starts the renewal process. How you live. Uh, this is where the sanctification comes in. People don't want to talk about sanctification. They won't talk about giving up nothing, putting off something. They always say, put off the form of man. Put them off. Get rid of them. That stuff you used to do before you got saved, you can't keep doing it. But everybody, but these, 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 the other preachers on TV say, I don't care what they say. What does the Bible say? I ain't, I ain't telling you what I say. I say what the Bible say. Ephesians 4 and 22 say you have to put off. Stop doing the form of conversation. That's your form of lifestyle. 
That's the things that you used to like doing before you got saved. Some of the stuff you used to wear, the haircuts you used to have, how you used to walk and drag your leg when you walk. You, used to, you know, all, all that stuff got to be put off. All that old coolness and such as you can't throw it like you used to throw it. Man, don't look at me like, I, I, man, I, man, look, I was out there. I know about throwing it. Some of the music you heard back then, you can't hear it no more. Because those music... That music brings back feelings. And then those feelings produce actions. And your actions condition your mind. So you have to be real careful. I mean, sometimes I hear a certain song. When I hear temptation come on, I have to automatically just cut that thing off. I have to cut it off or I'm going to start singing. I'm, I'm going to just break out singing. So if I don't cut it off, I say, well, I ain't going to sing that much. <laughs> it's okay. It ain't cursing. Yeah, but when it was when I was listening to it, I was drunk and high. It took me to a spot that I don't want to go back to. And some of these songs we, we listening to right now today, I don't care if it is got the word gospel in front of you. You don't need to hear that stuff. The beat saying gospel. The same beat that was going on in the club, and all they did was change the word. That song was originally for the club. Now you don't bought it into the church and, and say Jesus once and think it's a gospel song. If you do that, put off the former man. The former conversation, the old man. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So the old man has to go. Your old way of thinking, the old way of talking, the old way of doing this stuff that, that you call your personality. Or, that's just me. And a lot of us don't want to get rid of that. A lot of us think that's cool. Listen, if we can't change completely, God ain't going to deal with you. I'm trying to tell you, we got, we got some situations going on in our life because we refuse to wholeheartedly change. And the only way you're going to be able to condition your mind is change your actions. Quit trying to let your, your mind change your actions. Your actions going to change your mind. I, I got my mind on the Lord. I just sit and you get up and do the same thing every time. You have to practice these things. These things, you have to be conscious of these things. You, you, you just can't sit around and, and hope they go away. Yeah, you, 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 when, 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 you, when you're sick and you, you've been coughing for two weeks, you don't you can't go to the doctor and get something done about that. But you let your, you let your old man stay there. Well, I, I can handle him. It's the worst thing you can do is sit around and try to handle your old man. Why? The Bible said, which is corrupt. It's corrupt. It's going it's to turn you into some stuff that you don't think you're going to be again. It might not be the same thing that you were before when you got delivered. See, this is how sneaky the devil is. You, you delivered from that curtain and that drinking and that partying, but now he done corrupted another part of you. But you ain't, hey, I, would, I wasn't uh, bound on this so I can handle this. You can't handle no sin. You can't handle nothing that's not like God. And if you let that stuff creep in, that stuff is going to take over you like that first thing you had to get delivered from took over you. You didn't start out a drunk. You didn't start out a, a, a alcoholic. But it developed into that because you allowed it to grow. You nurtured that thing. And when you let something in you that you know don't belong in you continue to grow, it's going to take over. The devil would kick it in and he'll just, next thing you know, he just own you. 1 Corinthians 11. And just because you know a thing, here, here's the problem. Once we get all this information, we don't, we, 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 we've already learned it. We already know. But we have a problem doing it. All this information, all this stuff we're getting. If you, whatever your job is, if you, 
Once you get the information, you put it to use. You put it in action. Uh, Elder Broaden, was he out there working on, on fire trucks? Once he learned how to work on them, he just can't read the book and get paid. Oh, he got to fix a fire truck. Yeah, we reading the Bible and want to go to heaven, but we don't live right. I read the Bible three or four times. You still doing the same thing you were doing before you read it. That got to be some action. Quit, quit letting these preachers tell you all you got to do is give your life to Christ. You ain't got to do nothing. You're a lie. Read the Bible. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. See, Paul is saying, follow me the way I'm following Christ. And the way you know I'm following Christ is if you know the book. You can't be taking these preachers' word for it. Get you a Bible. Read your Bible. Find out about how you're supposed to live, how you're not supposed to live. If the preacher get up here and start telling you anything, and all you're doing is coming to church with no Bible, now you just following a man. Read. Now I praise you, brethren. Uh-huh, sister and the children. Read. That ye remember me. Remem and remember, remember, the story. remember. Quit forgetting I, when, when, when you get a message, when a good hot message come around, when something finds you and you know that's about you, remember that. Don't be like, uh, 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 I heard it and then you go on and then a week later you're back in that same condition. Because you're, you're not conditioning your mind. You're not doing what you hear. If you do what you heard, then your mind will start doing, will start acting like you do. Promise you. When I when I think about getting delivered, my mind stayed on dope. I went to sleep. I wake up sweating because I needed to get a high. My body shake when I needed an alcoholic drink. But once I I got delivered and I don't do it no more, and over a period of time, I don't even think about it no more. My mind has changed. It changed. My actions changed my mind. But you, you, if you don't do anything different, your mind is going to stay the same and your mind is going to be pounding you. Do it. Your mind is going to keep telling you, hey, you got to go do it. You got to go do it because you're not trying to fight it off. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. That ye remember me in all things. In all things. Not just some of the things that you want to do. All things. The scriptures, like I said, the scriptures you don't like. The scriptures that's riding you. The scriptures that's coming up your street. Read. And keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. And keep and do the ordinances as I delivered unto you. Read. But uh -huh. I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. Every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. Listen, we got to understand that God has order. And we got these new Church folk and preachers included don't think you got to go to church. We got these people that, that get their get they stuff from the house on Sunday morning in their slippers and laying in their bed and on their iPads. I don't have to come and assemble myself anymore. I ain't never seen this taken out of the Bible that you have to not assemble yourself anymore. It's still in there. I don't know what, but if you got a Bible that's not in there, you need to get you another Bible. But we, we're allowing these things to happen. You got internet pastors and internet bishops and all you're doing is getting all your stuff off the internet. You're not bringing nothing to the work of God. You're just taking, taking, taking and not putting nothing back in. And they got their own way of thinking. They got their own way of doing things. That's why it's called corrupt according to deceitful lust. They're deceiving themselves. Because of what they want to do. Simple as that. It's not what you want to do. It's what the Lord wants you to do. This is why you have to change your mind. Jesus said, I want to do the will of the Father. And that, and that goes with dying on the cross. But we don't want to give up. No, we don't even want to give up pants. It's, it's, it's not that, 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 that we're not saved. Is that that we don't want to go through the motions of staying saved and drawing people. Once we put it out there that this is what we stand for, we got to hold to that. We got to hold to that.
Believe me, I used to love wearing shorts. I don't wear shorts no more. Sisters say, well, the brothers ain't never got to give up nothing. We got to give up something. Yeah, I can't be wearing my, my fubus no more. Do anybody wear a fubu? I'd probably be the only one with a fubu. <laughs> well, whatever they were now, I keep telling you, I'm dated. I'm dated. I'm, I'm stuck where I was saved. I don't, need, I don't know what's going on now because my mind has been changed. I don't keep up with the new fashions. I don't know what nobody wearing. But when you when you all when you know everything new, you you still you still looking over the fence. Got all the styles, you know what everybody doing, what they listening. I don't even know. I don't even know gospel. Oh, I don't know no new gospel artists. Y'all sure don't know new no 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 secular artists. I, I don't even know the gospel artists. Some people come to you heard this song. I don't know who that is. I don't. I just I, I don't go there no more. I keep myself away from that. I, I protect my salvation. If I let that stuff start seeping in, all of a sudden, I'm telling you, my, my feet start moving. <laughs> Philippians four and eight. And nine. Because these people got a mindset that they think they could do whatever they want to. I could think the way I want to. I could act the way I want to. All I got to do, I gave my life to Christ. Christ know I'm saved. It don't take all that with you over there preaching. I go to a church, they don't talk about it. It's because the pastor don't talk about it. Don't mean it's not in the Bible. He, 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 he's, not, he's not lying to you. He's just omitting some stuff. He needs, to, he needs to give you the full gospel. That's right, that's right. And, he's, and he's not preaching this on purpose so you can stay and feel good about what you're saying and he can keep getting your money. I want you to go to heaven. And if going to heaven means you're going to get mad and leave for a few months, well, that's, that's good. That's good. Then. I mean, you, you, you're going to take care of yourself. You're going to walk out of here and you're going to go get yourself together. Then you come back and you be a new person. Amen. Amen. Philippians. And eight says what? Finally, finally, brethren, sister and children, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things. Now, this is what he's talking about. Whatsoever things are true. Read. Whatsoever things are honest. Listen to the list. Read. Whatsoever things are just. Uh huh. Whatsoever things are pure. Read. Whatsoever things are lovely. Lovely. Read. Whatsoever things are of good report. Read the Bible. If there be any virtue. If there be any virtue in you, read. And if there be any praise. And if there be any praise, if you're doing any praise, then read. Think on these things. Think on those things. Quit thinking about a car, a job, a wife, some food, some clothes, some sex. Quit thinking about that stuff. That's fleshly stuff you're thinking about. All we think about is the now. What can I get? What am I going to eat? What am I going to do? Where am I going to buy a house? You already got a house. Be satisfied and content in the house you in. You don't always need to upgrade just because somebody else upgrade upgraded. Let God upgrade you. Listen, we got to get our minds correct. We got to condition our mind on what to think. Read. Those things, those things which ye have both learned and received. Now, the things that you learn and receive. The problem with the church today, we, we have a reception problem. I, I receive this, but I don't receive that. Well, it's in the Bible. What do you mean you don't receive the Word of God? And that's what people are saying nowadays. They pick and choose what they want to receive. No, you don't, we don't get that option. If it comes from the word of God, we got to receive it. And if we receive it, we got to live it. That's no pick and choose. And, 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 and church folk got that bad. I received that, so I guess you didn't receive the other thing. When they tell you they receive something, they're telling you they don't receive something else. Because we're supposed to receive everything that comes from the word of God. They ain't going to tell you I don't receive it, but they're going to tell you what they do. So that means if I didn't say I received it, I don't receive it. Read. And heard. And heard. I mean, when you hear messages like this, receive it. Do something about it. If you do something about it, then you're conditioning your mind. Then your mind gets to change it. Then you won't have all these weird, crazy thoughts. Read. And seen in me. And seen in me. Do. Uh Uh-huh, do, 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 do. Look, here we go again with that. You got to do something. 
You got to do it. You can't just receive it. You can't just hear it. You can't just watch me do it. You got to do it too. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I told you these preachers to tell you you ain't got to do nothing. All you got to do is just come to church. Yeah, get in the choir. But I'm telling you, second, what the second Philippians, they work out your own. Work out your own salvation. Fear and trembling. So what did work mean? Nehemiah said the people had a mind to work. You got to want to do this thing. If you want to be a, a lazy, uh, uh, feed your mind saint, all you're going to do is just grow, 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 and you ain't going to change your mind. You're going to keep doing this. I ain't, not, ain't nothing what this preacher saying. I'm going to keep my mind just like it is. I'm not going to do nothing different. Ain't nothing happening right now. You know, there's a day coming that we're all going to be judged. And God's going to say, now this preacher just got up there and he's told you exactly what I told him to tell you. It ain't coming from me. No, and let me tell you, quit getting mad at me. Get mad at the speaker instead of the person who's telling the speaker what to say. If I'm, that's why I go to every scripture because I want to show it to you in the Bible. Read the book. And the God of peace. And the God of peace shall be with you. And He shall be with you. We want peace, but we don't want to do the things that brings peace. We got all this hell going on in our lives, but we don't want to condition our minds. We, 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 we don't want to change our lifestyles. It's going to come a day. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. Don't you worry about it. It's going to come sooner than, than later for some. That God is going to show himself. God going to say every word that you heard that you ignored. I'm going to hold you accountable for it. Some of us, we're in situations right now because we didn't take wise counsel to begin with. And you're refusing to take it now. God said, God says, show your people. Let them know where they are coming up short. But we're having an issue. We just don't want to do it. James said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. And guess what he said you do when you do that? You're deceiving your own selves. You're not fooling nobody else. There's a deception come when you think you don't have to live according to the word of God. When you think you're the exception to the rule. Everybody always think it's, I'm the exception. And then when, when it comes down on somebody else and, and you see people dying, God is not going to explain to you why this person died. We always want to know why, why, why. Now they probably died because they were disobedient to the word of God. They ain't got to be sick. They ain't nothing got to happen to them. People are just dying. When the doctor says natural causes, and God said because you were disobedient. Lives are getting cut short. Things are happening here. If this world is just too crazy for somebody not to want their mind reconditioned and lock in to the word of God. And start living according to what God wants us to be. Go back to Ephesians. We're going to be out here in a minute. Ephesians 4 and 23. Let's get, let's get back in Ephesians. Amen. Read. And be renewed. And be renewed. 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 That's, that's a, that's a, you resume after an interruption. Reestablish yourself. Uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born again. Read. In the spirit of your mind. In the spirit of your mind. Yeah, some of y'all, when y'all paying attention at the benediction, I know everybody don't pay attention to the benediction, but but when Elder Broughton get up and he and, and he he start praying and he said, uh, 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 "Lord, bind the enemy from the from the uh, it, it was traps, scheme, boob, and the entrapment of and the entrapment the the devil is trying to entrap your mind. And when he entrap your mind, the only thing he's going to start doing now is bringing about imagination." 
Now you don't now now everybody's talking about me. Now now everything is going wrong. Ain't nobody's talking about you. Ain't nobody doing nothing. And now everything is just uh, 